Greetings everybody, coming to you from my 2023 Nissan Versa S with a manual transmission. It's a little dark out, um, which actually gives a, a good opportunity to demonstrate the uh, automatic uh, bright headlights function. It's, it's, it's okay, it's not great. Um, actually, it's funny, the best one I ever had was in my 2007 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Um, that one was almost perfect. This one gets tricked here and there. Now, I'm not going to have a lot of oncoming traffic here, but if it thinks it sees a car coming, it will automatically dim the headlights for me. Um... But, uh, very rarely do I see a car on this road. Maybe once I get out on the more main road, I might see some. Um, just a bit, uh, see right there, it thought there was a car coming, so it automatically turned the bright lights off. So just a little bit ago, before I started filming, actually, a deer decided that it wanted to, uh, try to outrun my car. And, um, this car has um, two features, um, brake assist and electronic brake force distribution. So what that does is if you punch the pedal very quickly, it senses that you want to stop with full stopping force. And so it applies that for you automatically, even if you haven't uh, applied it all with your foot. And it shifts to the um, to the wheel wheels that have the most traction, so it actually gets the braking power down better. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. I mean, I've said in some of my other videos about this car, but due to the sound and the feel and everything like that and the overall driving experience, this is more or less like buying a brand new 90s car in the modern day with modern safety features. Now, some of you may not like the way I drive. I've gotten a lot of comments that uh, I'm gonna blow up the engine and whatever. This, this car could drive at 6,500 RPMs all day long and never have a problem. So the only thing that's going to happen is I'm going to use more fuel. I tend to like to stay in the power band when I'm driving. So that's why I do a lot of that. So typically on this road here, once I get uh, around this next bend, is I'll probably just leave it in third gear. Uh, I think that'll keep me more between three and 4,000 RPMs depending on the speed I'm going. So there was a car coming there. I don't know if the brights were on. Um, it may be light enough out that it's not even going to turn the brights on anymore after this. But, oh, there it goes. So I've owned this car since um, April. It's now December, so I don't know, almost eight months. I haven't driven it a whole lot, as you can see from the miles, 4787. I do drive it periodically. Um, it is a very pleasant car to drive overall. Um, it, it feels like, I don't know, I can't think of the exact word. I don't want to say soft or, or cushy necessarily. I've been recently driving my GR Corolla, which by contrast is very, um, not necessarily harsh, but very firm, very sharp. So this takes, in, in comparison to a car like that, this takes a lot of the edge off and, and just kind of like puts like foam padding around the experience. So although I'm getting decent steering feedback, it's, it's still pretty light. Um, it does tell me what's going on with the front tires to a, to a point. Um, 
no play or anything. It's it's uh, you know it's it's reasonably um, tight, if not necessarily precise. And then the same goes with the shifter. You know the shifter is um, it's fine in this car, but it's considerably more vague than something like the GR Corolla, which is yeah it's not a problem. It's just the nature of the car, I mean, because this car is built to a much lower price point. So they're not going to have the extreme precision built into something like this that they do on a car like the GR Corolla or even the Elantra N that I used to own. Now, the seats are extremely comfortable. They're, they're just shaped right. Um, and they're very well padded. And... Uh, I've had, well, I've actually owned four of these Versas with this body style and have had them on several long trips and they have always consistently been very comfortable. No driver fatigue, no matter how far you drive. Um, just, they're just a great highway car, uh, great for cruising. Um, with the type of driving I'm doing, uh, I haven't reset the average fuel economy for a long time, so it looks like I'm getting 38 overall, which I'm going to say in reality is more like 36 or 37 if, if you actually measure it at the pump and manually calculate it. I think it was a little slightly optimistic, not, not as bad as some other cars I've had. Um, and this thing is only rated to get I think it's like 27 or 28 city and 35 highway and, and that's largely because the the gearing is a lot taller in this car not taller shorter in this car than like with the automatic which is rated significantly better but I've heard some people say that they don't do quite as well in the CVT version as I do in the manual version I'm not a fan of CVTs um, I am a fan of manuals, so I, I specifically seek these cars out with the manual transmission. Um, it was interesting to see some of the decontenting that they did when they uh, switched, um, I believe in 2022, uh, when they were still having like the shortages. Um, they got rid of the push to start, which was right down there, and now I don't know if I can you can see it on the video it, it's just basically got the old-fashioned stick the key in uh, one thing that that happened as a result of that um, oh sorry one other thing is you don't have a remote key fob anymore you actually have to stick the car in the door and twist it which really adds to the 90s feel of this car again but they did not program that correctly um, and as a result, in certain circumstances, you can have a power loss. Um, and those two circumstances are if you turn the key and release it uh, before it starts, that will trigger it. Or if you're driving and you start out and stall the car and then restart it, that will also trigger it. So you'll have basically no power. Um, I've done a couple other videos about that if you want to look more into that. If you have that problem on your Versa 22, 23, 24, uh, file a complaint with Nishta. Uh, I'm going to try to remember to put that link. I think that's the only way we're going to be able to get that taken care of on this car. I've, I've filed a complaint. Several other people who have watched my other videos have filed a complaint. And I've actually mailed them a couple letters to hopefully they open an investigation. Um, it's a safety issue, but if you know what's going on, it, you, I, I think it's like after it happens, then if you shut the car off and restart it again, I think it automatically clears. But it can be a real surprise for somebody who, for example, is trying to pull out into traffic right after something like that happens. So that's really the only major flaw with this car. As long as you don't stall it and you always start it uh, on the first try, you won't have that problem. But 
If you own one of these cars, please take about five minutes to file the complaint about that. Um, hopefully it'll save somebody some issues uh, down the road. Um, you know, I'm used to cars with quirks. I mean, I wouldn't expect a brand new car to have problems like that. But, I mean, they all, generally speaking, have one, one thing or another. Um, I don't know, but I don't actually expect my GR Corolla to have any issues for a long time. Depending on how long I keep it, we'll see. But, yeah, I mean, overall, I would absolutely recommend one of these Versus to somebody. They're still, um, you can still get one around 17 grand. Um, I actually got a small discount on this one when I bought it because I had a special coupon sent to me from the dealership. Even though they, they didn't need to. I mean, these manual Versas are still super rare. I think they're pumping out more of them for the 2024 model year than they did for 2023. And I couldn't find one. I wanted to get a 22, but I couldn't find one. Now, 23 is the first year of the refresh with the different front end than the 20 to 22 models. Um, I don't, I don't think they did anything else on the 2024. Um, I have to look into that. But typically, when there were car shortages, I've been able to sell my other ones for more than I paid for them, and then go buy another another new one to replace it. I've made some videos about that if you are interested and want to dig that up. That, in today's market, is no longer the case. You cannot do that anymore in today's market. So, if you buy one of these now new, chances are you're going to lose money on it, but not much. Uh, just in in reference, um, I think the sticker on this one was like 17.4. No, 17.2. And... Um, I bought it for sixteen nine, and I've put just under five thousand miles on it. Let's see, make sure he's not taking my road. Lots of trucks on these back roads. Um, Vroom just offered me sixteen five for it, so I mean, it's in terms of depreciation, it's it's excellent, but they're definitely not the the profit machines they used to be, and. Another thing, for some strange reason, Kelly Blue Book does not have a value for the 2023 Versa. And as such, I've not been able to get in any offers from Carvana, who have typically been the ones to offer insane prices for these. Let's do a little bit of an acceleration run here. It's got it's got really good power for what it is for an economy car like this. Um, you know, back I'm, I'm making reference to '90s cars. Back in the day, this would have been the upper trim level, the sportier trim level of, of a car like this. And and maybe to get that much power back then, you would have had to have a little turbocharger strapped onto it or something like that. Um, yeah, the, the engine, I think, is is uh, a pretty reliable one, pretty reliable unit. Um, I think the transmission also, but um, if I were to end up keeping one of these long term, I would definitely change the transmission oil about every 30,000 miles. Um, it doesn't really say to do that in the owner's manual, but... I would do that anyway, just as a good preventative. Uh, probably change the brake fluid every couple years, maybe three years, every two to three years. That's another thing people overlook. Coolant, I don't know, maybe every, every five to six years. And then the oil, the owner's manual says to do it every 7,500, which, um, 
I may go with that. Now this car from the dealership I bought it from gave me two oil changes uh, for free. Uh, just they throw that in when buying the car. Normally I like to do my own oil changes, but the Nissan dealer where I bought this car, they seem pretty good. Probably give them that business. Because, uh, I mean, technically I paid for it already. And now, in contrast, on my GR Corolla, I'm probably going to do all that servicing myself, even though it comes with like two years and 25,000 miles of factory service. Um, yeah, I, well, I'm debating on that. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I've got to kind of read the reviews of the service department where I bought the car and uh, maybe talk to them, see which oil they plan on using. I don't know if the GR Corolla takes a different oil than like a regular Corolla. I mean, if it takes just the regular slop, that'll be fine. Which I think is still synthetic these days. I think they're all like, what, OW20? I think that's what this one takes. You could probably put anything pretty much in this engine and it would be fine, especially now that it's fully broken in. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's that. I mean, I, I haven't had any any real issues with the car um, other than what I mentioned about the power loss so I, I think in, in terms of that it's going to be a reliable car it's going to be a durable car um, now if you drive it in the winter um, and I, I would I would expect the drivetrain to far outlast the body so, you know, in a circumstance like that, um, I would actually even be inclined to stretch the oil change interval a little bit. I'm used to German cars, and I think you can get away with 10,000 mile oil changes as long as you're using a good synthetic oil. Um, I have no idea what this came with from the factory. Um, I'm guessing it's a synthetic oil. Probably not anything special for the break-in or whatever. I mean, because this is a mass-produced engine run of the mill. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say right now. If you have one of these, drop in and say hi. Uh, if you've made it this far. I've been rambling on for quite a while. And, um, yeah, have a great day, everyone.